This episode is brought to you by Wear Buff, your go-to for Buffalo-inspired apparel. Get your hands on stylish t-shirts, hoodies, and more at wearbuff.com. That's W-E-A-R-B-U-F dot com. And make sure you use the promo code TWB at checkout for 10% off your first order. Stay Buffalo proud with Wear Buff. We are taking a look at training camp battles on the defensive side of the ball this week on the Wandering Buffalo podcast. You're now listening to the Wandering Buffalo podcast with your host, Justin Goddard. Bills Mafia, welcome in and thank you for joining me on this week's episode of the Wandering Buffalo podcast. My name is Justin and I will be your host today. And this show is on the Buffalo Fanbase Podcast Network. Um, Tons of great shows coming out pretty much every day of the week. So make sure you're checking out some of the other shows. Um, Even if this show is not your flavor, there's tons of stuff out there. Um, If you like the Bills, there's something that you like. So check it out. Um, Show is also brought to you by Wear Buff. Uh, I've been talking about Wear Buff for a few, probably about a month or so now. Um, some pretty awesome t-shirt designs, hoodies, merchandise, um, new designs coming out all the time. Just pick this one up. I ordered it a bit late for, for pride month, but Hey, it's here now. Um, pretty sweet, sweet stuff there. So check it out. Um, links to that right on our website. Um, today we're going to be talking about training camp battles on the defensive side of the ball. Um, Covered some of the battles on the offensive side of the ball last week. Um, So if you haven't heard that one, go ahead, check that one out. Um, Today we're going to move on to the defense. And the defense is where I'm kind of more excited for for what the training camp battles look like. Um, I think the offensive side of the ball, while there is a ton of change... Um, there's a lot of things that stayed consistent too. And, you know, most importantly on offense is your quarterback and we got 17 back there. Um, so we've, we've seen it with other great quarterbacks. You got to kind of rotate the weapons in and out and things are going to change along the way, but your, your hope is that, you know, your superstar franchise quarterback is, is going to help elevate some of the guys. Uh, Some of these dudes, I always think of Curtis Samuel for this, you know, playing with just subpar quarterbacks his whole career and still putting up numbers. Well, what does he, what does he look like with a great quarterback? Right. Um, So the defensive side of the ball, I, I think is a bit more interesting. We, we saw a ton of players leave when you think of Hoyer, Hyde, no, Trey White, just these long-term cornerstones on the defensive side of the ball. Um, so for me, not only are there a couple like starting positions that are going to be interesting battles, but I mean also when you start looking at the depth and in particular a couple positions here where we, we saw the depth really get tested last year. Um, Beans kind of made some moves this off season. That's like, Hey, let's, let's not go down that road again. Um, still some areas of concern for me on the, on the defense. Um, there's still time to tinker with the roster. We got training camp right around the corner. Um, but I think we're pretty much where, where we're going to be with this, with this group. Um, maybe an addition or two. Um, but I want to start out at the defensive end, um, which I think is not the most interesting conversation as far as starters go. Um, obviously, you have Groot. You have Epinesa, who I believe will be the starting defensive end opposite Groot. Um, Vaughn, who I think maybe goes into a little bit more of a rotation row, try to maximize his pass, pass rush reps. Um, you signed Dwayne Smoot. I think he's an interesting player. 
um, kind of rounding out depth. And then you kind of look at this remaining group, and I guess I'll I'll put Smoot in there too, of who's going to be, you know, kind of the last guy to make this team. Um, you have the free agent acquired this offseason in Casey Tuhill. You have your draft pick in Javon Solomon. You know, long time kind of practice squad rotation guy, Kingsley Jonathan, and then Cameron Klein, who was signed last year. Um, also kind of a practice squad guy. And I think it's, it's a pretty e- easy, you, you know, you know, you hope Javon Solomon is the one that makes this team. Um, Casey Tuhill, I got kind of excited for as a free agent addition to, you know, round out depth. I think Javon Solomon is somebody that had their eyes on and Tuhill was kind of signed to, be that you know in case we can't get a guy in the draft um do i i i I can't sit here and say solomon will be ready to be you know making an impact week one um you know a late late round pick effective defensive ends are you know usually pretty hard to get you know deeper in the draft um but all the messaging that's been coming out of one one bill's drive about Javon Solomon has been super encouraging to me. Um, we've seen him, you know, staying late after practice, you know, working with Sean McDermott. And I don't know. I think there's just a lot of room to be excited there. And it's not the most daunting depth chart ahead of him that, you know, maybe this year and going forward, there's there's room for him to make an impact. Um, So I think it's an interesting group. I will say that this is one of the positions where I'm kind of left wanting more. Um, We had Leonard Floyd last year lead the team in sacks. We haven't really done anything to replace that. You know, you hope Groot and Epinesa can stay healthy. I think they both had tremendous starts to the season and then were kind of hampered by injuries. Um, but both of them have dealt with a good amount of injuries um, throughout their careers so far. You got the 35 year old Von Miller, you know, you're hoping two years removed from his injury. He can be somewhat of the player that he was uh, when we signed him. We'll see what happens there. Uh, I think overall, this was a group that, could have used, you know, a, a bigger addition, but you know, here we are. Um, moving on to the defensive tackle room. I mean, your one two punch, amazing one two punch when they were playing together healthy last year in Ed Oliver and Daquan Jones. And then it kind of becomes a numbers game of how many are we going to keep? Austin Johnson. I think that's an awesome free agent signing. I was also really excited for Deshaun Williams. Um, I think he's kind of been playing out of position throughout his career and still making an impact. Um, as as kind of your rotation defensive tackles, these guys are going to get a lot of snaps. I automatically, you know, kind of put them both ahead of like the Jordan Phillips category. I don't think we were getting very much out of him. Um, so right there, that top four, I was pretty excited for. And then I, I think this is a pretty similar situation to the the Javon Solomon conversation where it starts to be a numbers game. And, you know, these, these guys are added before the draft. Um, Brandon Bean always does a very good job of this, of just kind of filling holes and letting the draft come to him and, you know, not having to reach for a particular position. Um, we, we have seen him do that a couple times. Um, but then you pulled Dwayne Carter in the draft and, you know, now, now it's how many guys are we going to keep there? Uh, Eli Anku also in the mix, long-term practice squad guy. He gets called up all the time. He's been signed to other teams for the active roster, made his way back to us. Um, but I think that's a very interesting group. I think it's 
somewhere where we have sh- struggled with depth immensely over the past few years and it's always challenging because we we rotate players so much but then <laughs> the drop off when you rotate can't be that significant um i love the idea of the rotation and keeping guys fresh and you know having your ed olivers you know ready to make an impact play at the end of the game because he's still got some juice um but i think there's been a lot of times where we've kind of struggled when you know your rotation guys are coming in um so excited to see how that group shakes out um like I said, this is a this is a position where it's kind of your top two are really solid, and then the intriguing storylines for for me is like how that the depth behind them plays out. Um, super excited for Dwayne Carter, and you know, hope he's hope he can end up being a piece. Oh, I didn't even throw in here, uh, Gable Stevenson. Um, Obviously, you know, an Olympic wrestler and just, you know, super athletic guy who's never really played football. Um, a low risk, high reward type deal. Maybe he comes in. If you're asking him to, you know, do pass rush reps, it's not like, you know, he needs to know every X and O of football that's ever been created. If it's kind of get in there, pin your ears back and go after the quarterback. Who knows, maybe he's something year one. I'm not going to get too excited for it. Um, but an interesting name added into the mix as well. Um, so we'll see how that how that all works out. Like I said, uh, Dwayne Carter, some, somebody I'm really excited for because I have wanted, you know, a decent investment at the defensive tackle position going back years. And this was like, back to when Starla Tulele was in the mix and getting a little bit older and we didn't really have a long-term answer behind him again. And then it was kind of the same thing with Daquan Jones, uh, you know, this past off season, uh, would he even be coming back? Um, and I think he's a tremendous player, but he's also getting up there in years a little bit. So to at least have somebody with, you know, some decent draft pedigree that can be in the building that can start learning behind these guys. Um, hopefully he can become, you know, one of the long-term answers there. Um, moving into linebackers. This is about the same story as um, the defensive tackles for me. You're, you're starting to in Matt Milano and Terrell Bernard. Um, I think this is, like a super slept on group. Uh, I've been seeing like some PF rank, PFF rankings and stuff coming out, you know, rating the top linebacker units in the league. And like the bills aren't even listed on the top 10. And it's like, it's like everybody forgot who Milano is. Um, and, you know, kind of understandably. So he was hurt most of last season. Um, but Bernard burst onto the scene last year, um, really shut me up for <laughs> all the concerns I had about middle linebacker. And, you know, his production alone, stepping in as the starting middle linebacker, um, was impressive enough. But, like, realizing that he did it without Milano as his running mate, you know, getting into linebackers, you know, two, three, four, five, um, Daquan Jones being out most of the year. Um, super excited to see the two of them playing together. Hopefully we can get a full, you know, healthy season from, from both of them. Um, but if we don't, Brandon Bean kind of, uh, looked at what happened last year. We're calling AJ Klein from his family vacation, to come start playoff games. Um, Bean did his work trying to kind of round out this step, so hopefully we don't end up in that position again. Um, adding Nick Nicholas Moreau, Deion Jones, Balen Spector, who's been kind of continuously in the mix, you know, when he can stay healthy, which 
hasn't really been often. Um, we have third round pick in Dorian Williams, who was, you know, kind of a head scratcher linebacker pick we made a couple of years ago. Um, you know, it was very similar to, to the storyline with Bernard of like, why did we take this guy? Um, you know, obviously Bernard ends up slotting in as a starter pretty quickly. Dorian Williams doesn't really have that clear path right now. Um, but as far as like, you know, a player in the system that's been in the building developing, he has the physical traits, um, you know, what kind of noise can he make in, in this depth chart? Then we have a draft pick this year, Edifon Ulufoshio. Um, I think he could at least contribute immediately on special teams. Um, Joe Andreessen added from UB. Um, just a lot of depth here that gets me more excited than AJ Klein. And this is not meant to be AJ Klein slander. Um, I I know there is. It's he's been around for so long. It's you know a few years back where you know. He was the brunt of everybody's joke. You know, AJ Klein can't play, blah, blah, blah. And then he came in in, in moments and like absolutely balled out. Um, that being said, you know, he was getting up there. He was, you know, basically retired and starting playoff games last year. Uh, so I think there's kind of a good mix of, you know, youth and, you know, veterans here, some, some young guys you know, developing draft picks and also looking at this group is looking at, you know, the changes to the kickoff rule, um, thinking about losing some key pieces on special teams like Tyler Metakevich. Um, so there's going to be a bunch of these guys that make the roster. Honestly, the bills usually keep six and I'm looking at, you know, a total of, nine guys on the roster right now and I'm having a hard time you know seeing a path of who makes it and who doesn't so I think this is kind of a group where you're throwing a bunch of bodies at the position that you think can play and then we're going to kind of see how training camp and preseason shakes out uh, maybe a couple of these guys end up on the practice squad but I think you at least have a group of guys here where if, if the depth is tested, you know, you have your choices between do you slot in a veteran like Deion Jones that, you know, you trust to be in the right spot all the time? Or do you want to, you know, have a little bit more variance and throw Dorian Williams in who, you know, we've seen you know, kind of make splash plays, but also make full speed mistakes that, you know, lead to bigger plays. Um, so I, I'm, I'm intrigued by the, the options here. Um, all that to say, you know, as far as defensively, I hope that we got Milano and Bernard all season and we only see these other guys on, you know, special teams and, and blowout wins. Um, you know, that's a great idea on paper, but it's the NFL. Um, the cornerback room. This is one where I'm I'm intrigued and I also feel like we could have added more here. Um, very similar situation with the linebackers to me of, you know, your top two, top three, because we're always in nickel in Razul Douglas, Benford and Taron Johnson up. Uh, Phenomenal. I, I love that. Love to see them all stay healthy. Um, Benford in particular has missed a ton of time with injury. And, you know, you're, you're one away injury away from Kyrie Elam stepping in. And I will say that I don't think we have the full story on Elam yet. He's still a super young player and he's probably going to give people flashbacks to Tremaine Edmonds. Um, but I, I'm probably a bigger bigger believer in Elam than a lot of people. Um, 
not to say that he hasn't had his issues when he's come in, um, but he's also made some really big plays for the Bills. Um, thinking about, you know, like the interception against the Dolphins to effectively end the game. Um, there's a handful of those in there. Um, I think this is a big year for him, but I think he's also going to get his reps and kind of have his chance to, you know, kind of stabilize his NFL career. And, you know, maybe he's an answer going forward. Um, but when we look at him as, you know, arguably the number three cornerback right now, um, I just think about how much time we've seen, you know, Dane Jackson having to start games because of an injury or, you know, we have to move the rotation around a little bit. Um, this is a group that's been kind of ravaged by injuries over the past few seasons. And, you know, Trey White's not here anymore, but he's missed a ton of time. And that forced you to start guys like Dane Jackson. Um, so I, I don't think Elam sitting in that, you know, third cornerback spot means that we're not going to see him at all. Uh, I think we're going to see good chance that we see a lot of him. So it kind of feels like it's becoming a make or break year for him. Um, behind him, Jamarcus Ingram, Daquan Hardy, Kyron Brown, Kenny Lovely, and Corey Couch. And Ingram is, is a guy that I, I have liked for a while, and he's one of those... Those fun to root for guys. It's kind of been making his way up through the practice squad. Very Cam Lewis like path. Um, and he's looked he's looked pretty good when we've seen him out there. Um, albeit in a, in a very limited sample size. Um, I think he's your kind of direct competition with Elam for that primary backup spot. And then Daquan Hardy a draft pick this year with, you know, the return abilities, maybe he factors in, um, into the return game. We'll see what happens there. I think that could be, you know, kind of a path to him possibly making the roster. Um, like I said, that this group very top heavy for me, I would have liked to see kind of like a, a little, little veteran insurance in case Elam's not where you want him to be. But this is one of the situations where I kind of lean a little bit more towards for, for lack of a different way of saying it, just trusting the process. Um, the coaches, the training staff, all that they're in the building with Elam every day. Um, we heard Bobby Babich say, you know, it's it's a new year. This is a clean slate for Elam and kind of resetting the deck. Hopefully he's able to, you know, kind of put it all together. And, you know, maybe we're sitting here this time next year and, you know, talking about the Bills decided not to bring back Rosul Douglas. But no worries. Elam looked great last year. He's going to slide up right next to Benford and, and we just carry on um, with two young guys. So Elam is is easily the biggest name I'm watching there and kind of trying to see how the off season goes for him. Uh, and then the safety group again, a position group where it was just kind of, we dealt with injuries. Uh, we had some struggles there and then, you know, I'll, I'll say we've lost Micah Hyde and Jordan Poyer for now. Um, there's, you know, that the never say never thing going on with Micah Hyde, um, where be, between him and being just kind of talking about, you know, the door being open and if he doesn't retire, he would only want to play for the bills. Um, I'll always be excited if Micah Hyde's in the mix. He's dealt with some kind of scary injuries and he's on the tail end of his career anyways for for his well-being uh i would probably say go ahead and hang it up but 
I'm not going to lie. If the Bills announced tomorrow that they were bringing Micah Hyde back for one more year, I'd be hyped for it. So we'll see what happens there. Um, but in the interim, uh, Taylor Rapp, Mike Edwards, Cam Lewis, second round pick Cole Bishop, Damar Hamlin, Kendall Williamson, and D Delaney. And I, I think this is very similar to to the linebacker group in – you know, here's a bunch of guys that we think could conceivably start. Let's let them all go at it and, and you know, iron sharper, sharpen iron and whoever's the best comes out and you're going to be starting. Um, Rap obviously gets an extension this year, which I was really excited about the signing of Rap last year. And then I think it was kind of a mixed bag last year. Um, but obviously, you know, things aren't really weren't really the ideal situation last year. I mean, you got Hoyer playing, you know, like a box linebacker and reps put in there and it, the whole situation just wasn't super ideal. Um what I like about this resigning of him is he was only here on a one year deal and you know, in the building with everybody every day. And, you know, despite having that mixed bag season last year, the staff could have chose to move on from him and be like, hey, we tried it out. It didn't go well. Um, we're going to look at different options. And they chose to bring him back. Um, so that vote of confidence gives gives me a little bit, a little bit of a pump up in how I feel about rap and, you know, possibly being one of the starting safeties. Um, Mike Edwards and G Delaney. I think these are both intriguing guys that have, you know, spent time being depth players, you know, like higher snap depth players. These aren't, you know, just guys that were sitting on a bench. Um, but I, I'm interested to see what either of them can do, you know, given the opportunity. Um, Cam Lewis, I talked about a little bit briefly and you know his come up putting in the work coming from the practice squad to you know kind of lock down a roster spot and now in conversation to be you know possibly one of your primary starters um mike edwards dealing with an injury right now you know does that keep him out of training camp preseason i don't think so um but if it's if it's something where they kind of wanted Edwards to take his time with it, um, maybe you see Cam Lewis get get some extra work in there. Um, Cole Bishop, super excited for this draft pick. Um, I think this one <laughs> might might go the the way of making a lot of Bills Mafia mad. You know, when we don't play our rookies right away, I mean. The, this group right here has like all the familiar symptoms of Cole Bishop's not going to be our week one starter. Um, there's a lot of like veteran depth added here um, that I think he can kind of take his time and come along and they, they can pop him in when they feel comfortable. Um, but I, I think he's going to be one of your two starters sooner rather than later. Um, and then DeMar Hamlin, obviously. Um Look, he's he's a guy that before, you know, his horrible incident was, you know, a, a pretty high draft pick and he was getting starting reps and he was playing as a full time starter and he was making some plays. He was making some full speed mistakes. Um, and then obviously his his learning curve there and his development kind of came to a screeching halt. And then last year, spent most of the season inactive. So last year was kind of a wash for me. Um, with Mike Edwards out with an injury right now, Hamlin's kind of been, uh, he's been a hot name in making plays. And, you know, you just hear his name a lot. And, you know, maybe that's a little bit of off-season hype. You know, not too many storylines going around. So... You know, you latch on to some things. Um, but I mean, he 
he was essentially projected to be uh, a replacement at safety when, you know, it came time for Poyer and Hyde to say adios. Um, we'll see what happens there. He's he's somebody that I'll be keeping an eye on, um, like I said, throughout the training camp and, and the, the preseason. Um, but there you have it, defensive side of the ball. Kind of battles all over the place on the defensive side of the ball. And like I said, it to me is a bit more interesting than offense because you, you you have a lot of change on offense, but you also have a lot of continuity. And I guess the same could be said for the defensive side of the ball. Um, but even some of the continuity is with major changes behind it, you know, or you're looking at like Epinesa going from, you know, just this strictly rotation player to, you know, now possibly kind of the full-time starter. What does he look like with more work? Um, so I, I think there's a lot more, I think there's a lot more opportunity to kind of find younger gems in this group. It, it, it kind of seems that anywhere they added some veteran depth, it's to compete with, like a young draft pick or, you know, a young player that's been working their way up from the practice squad. So I think there's a lot of interesting storylines here and, and reasons to be excited for the future. Um, so that's going to do it for this week's episode. If you made it this far, I do ask that you like, share, subscribe, make sure you're following us on YouTube. Um, all those things help us out immensely. Check out the website, wanderingbuff.com. Like I said, we have the links right to the Werebuff clothing line. Um, do all the things. All the things help me out greatly. Keep this show coming out every week. Um, we will see you next week for another episode. And as always, go Bills.